you have a Bible, uh, let me uh, invite your attention uh, for the few minutes we will share together today to chapter, chapter 16 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Chapter 16 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Uh, this is uh, what it says. I'd like to have you look uh, specifically at this particular verse. Verse 17 and some of the verses that follow. In the New International Version, 1617 begins by saying, Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades or hell will not overcome it. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I'd like to talk about uh, something you may be interested in today. Let's just call it the future of the church. Uh, the future of the church. The future of the church. While I, I know the stories of several people I gaze upon in the congregation, my own story, my own connection, my affinity, my affection, my love, my appreciation, my respect, but more than that, my devotion, dedication, and commitment to the work called ministry and church causes me to have uh, an unrelenting interest in what lies ahead for us in the future. Right. Hopefully when I look around the room and I see that many of you who sit here today have what could be termed a lot of sweat equity. Right. Uh, you got a lot of perspiration, a lot of inspiration, involvement, uh, dedication, invested uh, in the entity in your community called the church. And usually when you are heavily invested, you have a greater interest than those who are looking to just be compensated. When you are heavily invested, while you have heaven in your view, you have an interest in knowing whether or when you have a diminished, when you have passed from the scene, you tend to have some concerns about, I wonder what will this look like 10, 15, 20, or 30 years from now. That's if you have any level of what I love to call intellectual curiosity. If you have an interest in knowing what is to be, what is not, how will it reveal itself? What will happen? Or when the curtain of time has been pulled back, will our investment, will our devotion, will our commitment, will our dedication uh, to the church pay off? All right. Or will the present we now experience be a true predictor of what lies ahead in the days to come? All right. All right. Can we use right now to determine what the church will be like 10 years from now or, or 20 years from now. When I, when I know that you celebrate 
a hundred years of life and energy, effort and input uh, as a church, it's easy to decide that my history can be lived on for the rest of my life. But I'm here to tell you that uh, your history is only a preview of your possibility. Right. And so your history should not become your crutch. Uh, it should not be your alibi nor your excuse. For what you have done is only a, a small indicator of what you could have done. Because the more enlightened, the more informed, the more invested, the more inspired, the more mature you become, then the more you know to do. And so we are not allowed to make this determination. Which is why I thought maybe just looking at a couple of you who don't mind the gray hair showing, others of you who uh, wish some would just show up someplace, I fully understand that there's got to be a couple of people who have an abiding curiosity like me. Who, who've gone when the storms were raging, who showed up when no one else, who've been of the boast of the community. You're the first one always here, the last one to leave. Uh, you're the most faithful, you're the most dedicated. Never been a funeral that you missed. Haven't missed a revival, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. However, our past, it is not our future. And when I heard what Jesus said in response uh, to the uh, awareness and the high level of spiritual uh, intuitiveness that uh, Peter demonstrated when he lifted his hand and said, I got the answer. I know who you are. Let me just tell y'all, you added about 10 minutes. All right. Especially the folk up front. You see, I don't have no glasses on. So I can see past these first two rows and so they're responsible for everything. And I never thought fans, if you, you, you only want a front row seat if you're a fan. You don't go down front to a Beyonce and go on to be a front row and don't like it. So if you sit down front, I'm not looking for a Jesus jury. I'm looking for some Jesus fans to be on the first few rows. I want a front row seat to go sleep on the act. I, mean, I could be in the nosebleed seats if I'm going to sleep. Amen, go right there. I don't know, it may be another generation before I get back, so I need to say some of this stuff. It's critical that the church fully understands that we are not engaged in a losing cause. And so I thought just maybe somebody had an interest in, in what's ahead for us. In the future. Yeah. Uh -huh. Give me just a moment yeah, yeah. Uh, to just uh, maybe use a personal moment to explain my own interests right. and, and how excited uh, you may become to get uh, a view of what lies ahead for us. Yeah. Yeah. When I was uh, much younger, I, I was a tremendous uh, comic book fan. And so I was a fan of all of the uh, the people who get movies now. Yeah. All the Marvel superheroes, uh, uh, all of the super people. Could have been super ant, super dog. If it was super, I, I was into that comic. And I lived right next door to a a drugstore. Uh, the pharmacist, uh, Doc Johnson, was a guy I knew, and so. I'd always know when you're going to get the new shipments of comic books in. And I was always there to get all the fresh copies straight out the box to see what was going to happen in this issue. And there were some times when I would read uh, one of those uh, copies of the new edition of one of my favorite heroes, 
and the plot was so diabolical. I get too nervous to read it all the way through. I have to go over. I, I know none of y'all would do this. I go to the last page and see how my hero came out. And then I go back and read it through because then I knew he was going to be okay. So I was comfortable reading uh, that edition. And when you see how Satan has a so uh, diabolically affected and infected our community and we see a tremendous drop off in the demographics of church attendance. We see that our promotion, our marketing, many major congregations are just places now where they hold memorial services for what they used to do. And so it, it, it's, it's tough to, to determine what the future holds for the church. Sunday school teachers cry for students to teach. Public school teachers complain overcrowded classroom. Got too many, I can't teach. So it says there's not a shortage of people. There's a shortage of energy in church. Where people have decided that it's not their job to be fishers of men, they're just here to watch the aquarium. That means all they do is tend to the fish who are already caught. You might want to write that down. Yeah, we're not trying to catch any fish. We're trying to clean fish. Talking about who's right, who's dirty, who ain't right, who ain't quite right. It's not your job to clean the fish, it's your job to just catch it. God's got him when you catch it. It's amazing how when you understand how we've been impacted by the march of time, the enlightenment of people, uh, the availability of an informational glut on any subject. All, right. All you gotta do is just Google it. <laughs> and so, in such an age, you've got to wonder. Many of us have resigned ourselves to this just the way it is. This is our new reality. But the truth is, that ain't the truth. The truth is, when you have decided that God knows what he's doing, God understands fully how to impact our culture, our families, our communities, our society, and on a broader level, our global community. God, God's been in charge for a little while. Uh, his resume is rich and long. Filled with uh, all kinds of incidents, episodes. Uh, God has a multitude of capacities to correct anything that's out of order. Yeah. But I come to suggest to you that you and I have to fully appreciate that God has given us an assurance yeah. not to just hang out and be happy with mediocrity. Yeah. No, he's given us this assurance to make certain that we don't give in, we don't collapse, uh, we don't cave in, we don't turn loose, we don't surrender, we don't let go, we don't retreat, we don't bow down in defeat to the fact that someone else has a message greater than our own. I'm glad to tell you that in spite of how things look, and, and, and when I look at the word and then look up from the word at the world, I must admit yes. things don't look good. All right. All right. I mean, I, yeah, I heard what Jesus said. Yeah. What he said was, upon this rock, yeah. 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 I will build my church. Yeah. Right. And he said, the very gates of hell we will not prevail, will not overwhelm it, will not impede it, or will not deter it. 
will not overcome it. Will not victimize it. And, and I, I read that with, with great assurance. And I, I'm inspired when I read it. But when I look up at the world, it makes you want to retire. <laughs> because the picture of the world right now is quite different from the one in the word. Well, well, let me just talk about Chicago because y'all don't seem to uh, be able to identify what I, I, I guess that, that, that's why you uh, maybe Indianapolis is not different from where I come from. So, so maybe I should even change this sermon because your future's good. I'm just, I haven't even got to point one yet, so I got to. been so quiet. <laughs> Blame me. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I really didn't mean to get that loud when I saw Sister Dozen. I was trying to wake her up. But I calmed back down. It's amazing. How, how critical of the moment is for us as the people of God. And I think it, it, it is important, one, that we inspire, that we encourage ourselves because the picture for churches are not looking good yeah. at the moment. Yeah. And I think the picture is not looking good because most of us don't look like our picture. Because <laughs> oh! the picture of the church I see right here does not look like the picture of the church I see out here. Now you know how you feel when somebody goes. This supposed to be you. Aren't you insulted? Oh, this must be one of your young, younger pictures. Come on, I, 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 I'm sorry to have to tell you, we don't look like our, our picture. The picture of the church, as, as, as demonstrated and portrayed in the verbiage of the scripture, does not appear to be uh, any kin to the image we reflect right now. And so I think it'll look better the more we look like our picture. Yeah. Yeah. But when I heard what Jesus said upon this rock, yeah. right. I'm going to build my church and nothing, nothing will prevail. Nothing will succeed. Nothing will overcome it. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing will be able to defy my church. Yeah. And yet, there's a line everywhere. Hot dog stands, shrimp, fish, cookies, biscuits, pretzels. Anywhere you go, there's a line except church. Come on, stay with me. And not because the city is empty of people, but churches are empty. Sunday morning service is in intensive care. The obituary of night service has already been printed many years ago. Need a couple of witnesses, that's all. Y'all yeah. like long sermons, that's okay. Yeah. Stay with me. Because yes. I tell people the Bible says make a joyful noise, not a nod. If you're next making a noise, you got a chiropractic problem. Yeah. Well, stay with me. Come on, stay with me. Now, I'm not picking on anybody, just saying, you know, if you keep on, you, you say, you know, I give that to a stranger at the red light. Look out my window. Go. I know the Lord deserves a little more than I give, but somebody I ain't never seen before. I walk down the street all day. How you doing? Good to see you. Now, oh, I don't give Jesus what I give a stranger. Yeah. Yeah. He's been better than somebody I just met. I got to give him a little more of that. No, he deserves a praise. He deserves a shout. He deserves a little more than that. 
The future of the church depends upon the energy of the church. Nobody wants to join misery. And most of us look miserable unless we're doing something. And once we're through, we reassume our miserable posture. Same people who get up and go, come on, everybody, praise the Lord. Soon they sit down. You go like what happened to the prayer. Raise the praise for where you are. The future of the church is in jeopardy. How did it happen? What happened? On whose watch did it occur? If that's a lost generation, who was in charge when they got lost? Oh, come on, come on, talk back to me. Huh? Scoot your chair up and stay away. Huh? It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. When I hear the word and I look at the world and I see the despair of disciples. See people ready to give up. Just hanging on till Jesus comes. No, but you've got to be active. If, you, if you're still here, he left you here for a reason. See, when I look at Pastor uh, Gurdon uh, Emeritus, I, I see someone who is living by a principle. As long as you project something in front of you to achieve for God, he'll leave you here to achieve it. Now, did you miss that? As long as you're not saying, well, I hit the magic number, I quit. Yeah. Ain't no magic number. Yes, sir. If I don't look in the mirror, I forget my age. Right. Ain't no magic number. No, there's a magic belief system. Yeah. As long as you believe that God got you here for a reason, and you don't quit that reason. You keep saying, God, I got something else I want to do. I got a, another vision. I, 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 another seed is growing up. He'll keep leaving you here to tend to what you planted. But if you sit around and say, I guess the Lord done got you with me. Well, I'm going I'm to hand it all over here. I guess it's not my days are over. So God says, well, okay, now, because my retirement plan is out of this world. <laughs> so, no need to leave you here if you don't plan to do anything. You can spend your vacation time with me. <laughs> if you've decided to become a part of the Do Nothing Club, come on home. And as, as committed, as convicted, as heavenly as we look. Well, well, I know. At the end of this service, I can make an announcement that, that God has a few buses to the closest terminal. You can go to heaven today. Most of y'all will go out the back door. <laughs> a blues philosopher once wrote these words. Everybody want to go to heaven. Y'all don't know But nobody wants to die. See, we want the best of what God has. We want to produce, but not the practice. We want what God has, but not the process. And he said to these men who were his apprentices, his followers, they wanted to know, here we are in the shadow. Of all of these churches and temples that once were. Yeah. 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 Here he stood with his own guys in Caesarea Philippi. Yeah. A place of polygamous, multi-God worship. Right. But now the temples were in disrepair. Right. Right. Cobwebs covering the pews and the altars. The doors locked. Mm. Have you ever wondered? What would your church look like 20 years from now when we have more funerals than baptisms? I, I just need somebody to just talk some truth. In. When you're having more funerals than baptisms, what can the future of the church be? 
When you're more concerned about what you roll over at the end of the year than what you use it for. We bragging about how much we got in the bank and hungry folk in the congregation. Does that make sense to me? Thank you for the five amen they got on <laughs> It's amazing how we are concerned about what does the future hold for the church. Jesus said to his disciples, listen, let's have a conversation quickly. I need to know who do men say that I am? Because who you say he is determines how you respond to what he says. Look, did you get that? Who you say he is determines how you respond to what he says. You may say he's the great God, but if you are not implementing, if all you do is fill your Bible with notations with no application, what's the point? If all you do is highlight the scripture without highlighting it in your lifestyle, what's the real reason for cold yellow, cold blue for prophecy, cold this for wisdom, and cold this for history? It don't even matter. Copious notation without application leads to no transformation. Your book's so full of notes you can't hardly read your Bible. But none of it has leaked into your life. The church is in danger, not because God cannot keep his word, but because the church will not obey his word. We live by our own personal gospel. Most of us have a fifth gospel in all of our Bibles. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, your name. I got a fifth gospel. In the fifth gospel, you read, it ain't what you do, it's how you do it. That's in the fifth gospel. We have not heard him when he responds to who he is. Who he is will determine what you expect from God in the future. You will know that God is not through with you yet. If he's not through with you, he can't be through with church. Now he's coming back for the church. And I thank God that when I got this response that I read to you in 17 and 18, it was not Peter who said this. If Peter had said it, I wouldn't have trusted it. And I like it. He's human. He's like a lot of us. Yeah, but I wouldn't have put my faith in what Peter said. What if Thomas had said upon this rock, I wouldn't believe in him either. Because he proved that he had doubt as a, as a default position in his lifestyle. When I, when I heard what he said upon this rock, I fully understood that there would be seasons of disruption to the impact of ministry. But we must hang on in there and hold on knowing that beyond our moment, God is counting on us to pass the baton. Yeah. With the faith that says, and this too shall pass. Yeah. What about the future of the church? Yeah. It requires that we want Analyze who we are. Yes. The church people are always busy looking through the window, mm. rarely in the mirror. Yeah. 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 Just need some people to say, man, I know you probably talked about this stuff over tea last night, but let's talk about it some more today, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, yes! We spend a lot of time gazing at other people. The only time we look in the mirror is to cover what we don't want them to see. Yeah. 
we spend a lot of time condemning other people outside of the church, but we never look in the mirror. It's the man in the mirror who needs ministry. It's the person in the mirror that God is holding responsible. God is not holding unsaved people for how unsaved they're acting. See, our problem is we want to get the, the world to act like the church when God intended for our own responsibility is to keep the church from acting like the world. And we are changing the complexion of the congregation because we've decided the only way to win is by joining them. And the only way to be effective, impactful, and magnetic is through the mystery of Jesus Christ. Let me get through before I doze. The word of God says, Jesus heard them and he said, I want to know whom do men say that I am. And he said, well, 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 some say that you are Elijah. Some say you are Moses. Some say you are one of the prophets. Some say they're not sure. He says, okay, that's okay. I, I can deal with the confusion of the people if my disciples are clear. Yeah. Now see, you missed that. Yeah. I can handle the people's confusion if my disciples are clear. Yeah. Because if you are clear, you can give them clarity. Yeah. But a lot of us are not clear. Yeah. We're still shopping for ideology. Yeah. We're still trying to find a doctrine that fits how I think. Yeah. We're still looking for a church that condones who I want to be. We are still trying to shape the church in the image of ourselves. He said, some say, you are a multitude of people. He said, well, let's bring the circle a little closer. Because I'm about to lay some heavy stuff on you. I want to give you some words that will be meaningful to future generations. I don't want you to miss out. So I, I need to ask you this next question. Who do you say that I am? Because if I am to you who I say I am, then you're going to see a revolution. If I am who you say I am, then you will know that my power exceeds all. Then I've got a word for you if you're going to be my church. I want to give you an assurance policy. Yeah. Come on. See, insurance begins at the grave and ends at the end of life. Yeah. Assurance is transferable. Yeah. Assurance operates in the realm of reality and in the realm of eternity. Thank God for assurance. His assurance was upon this rock. I will build my church. I, I, I don't know about other churches in other names, by other founders, but my church. I want you to go home knowing that you've got another hundred years ahead of you. That the future is bright for Christ missionary. That beyond where you are now, God already has a name for every person who will fill every seat. I need somebody to talk to me just a moment. God doesn't have to go searching. Within four or five blocks, there are people enough to stand in the aisle on Sunday morning. But you've got to do some self-examination. Got to begin looking the book yeah. on Sunday morning and see how many of the activities in the bulletin are for folk beside the ones who already come. I just need somebody to talk to me a minute. Just read the bulletin. 
the bulletin of every church tells you what, what their focus is. Yeah. Right. If you got more, more pages filled with sick lists and shut in, yeah. and all the meetings of the auxiliaries <laughs> for the rest of the week, then your focus is just tending the sheep yeah. who didn't run away. But when there's outreach for the women, and outreach for the men, and outreach for the seniors, and outreach for the youth, and a fellowship for those, and you're always opening new doors for people to find their way into church. I know we said the door for the church is open, but we need a whole lot of doors. And only the church can open doors that people will find themselves in need of what you have to offer. But it got to be some people who don't have a problem with being supplanted. Folk who don't mind being replaced. Because the truth is, you have not been successful until you identify your replacement. Write that down. You have not succeeded unless you've identified that you're not going to leave what you started on their own. The word of God says how, how. What he says is how. How. Are you going to allow yourselves to be dissuaded by what you see in the distance? I know you see these dilapidated buildings. He said, I know you see all of the ruins yeah. of religious efforts. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. He said, I know the influence you've had on your own mind and on your own faith. Uh -huh. And so today, what I heard him say was, upon this rock, I will build my church. Uh-huh. And then he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against what I'm doing. Uh -huh. And then he said to them, my Lord, what I really want to say to you my brothers and my sisters, yeah. what I want you to do is hold on a little while longer. Uh -huh. What I'm going to need of you doing today is waiting on Jesus. Because he's already said, my way will always win. Uh, and then he said, I want you to know the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. Yeah. Uh, the only reason the gates will not be able to prevail against the church is I'm going to give you some keys. Yeah. Did you hear me? I know, I know, I know, I know. Lord, I know what you're going to come against. But every game that you come in contact with, what I have is a key for that gate. Uh -huh. Some people decide the gate are going to come down the church aisles. But the church has to be on the move to meet a gate. Did you hear me? If you would not leave in the building, God will never have a chance to open any gates for you. <laughs> oh yeah. The Bible said, he said to them, oh, Build, build my 
church and the gates of hell shall not overcome it. What I come to say to you, Christ missionary, hang on in there. Your future is not uncertain. God has already said it's going to be all right. Uh, is there anybody here today who believes God knows what's in your future? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Oh, yeah. Yes, he does. I come to tell you, hang on. You ain't seen nothing yet. What God has in store for you. It might do it. going on in spite of a spiritual drought in spite of low attendance all around the globe there will be there can be a real revival I come to tell you today our future is going to be alright how do you know well, I looked at the last page. I took a little peek at the last page. We come out all right. We come out all right. Oh, yeah. Just a little while longer. Don't give in. Don't give up. The church comes out all right. Yes, it does. What you mean, Reverend? Well, I asked one of my prophet friends. I asked him, Oh, John. <laughs> When you were on Patmos, John said, Oh, Brother Parson, let me tell you who I saw. John said, I looked, I saw a number. I saw a number that no man could number. Uh -huh. Not encouraging my spirit. How many did you see? John said, Well, on my first look, I saw 100. I saw 144,000. That's all, John. That doesn't include me. I don't need to know about them. Can you tell? About the other number. John said, Well, I did see another number. I said, What was the number of that number? John said, I started with units, tens, and hundreds. I went to thousands. I went to tens of thousands. I went to hundreds of thousands. I then went to millions. I went to billions. I went to trillions. And then I went to septillions. No million and dexillion. He said, I couldn't count any further than that. I saw a number that no man could number. I said, that's a good number. But I need to know who they were. He said, it looked like those been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Me! 
to be brighter than it's ever been. You got too many shoulders to stand on to fall. Your future. Your future. If you're part of this church, that ought to be the best news you heard in a little while. Your future is safe. God's got more than a hundred years ahead of you. And not just the ones behind you. I know what's in the, the rearview mirror, but you better look through the windshield. 